Good evening, everyone. Hi. Hi. Uh, <laughs> Everybody okay? Yes. Yes, yes thank, thank you. you. Welcome to Ghostcast number five. Yeah, well done, Dale. And um, before we go any further, I, I, I would just like to wish uh, a really lovely fella a fantastic happy birthday for today. Is but that... it's also Dale's birthday, so uh, <laughs> happy birthday to Dale, too. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Not Dale, too. Happy 50th birthday. Heaven forbid. Thanks, to Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so that's the first bleep I've got to do. Um, right, so... As you know, those of you who have been joining us for our little half an hour or so jaunts every fortnight, uh, this is 30 minutes of complete, usually complete chaos that makes no sense whatsoever. And um, you think the other podcasts, ghost casts, have been bad? It's Dale's oh! choice to bring, <laughs> the, to bring the topic of the day and the news article of the day. Um, so without further ado... Dale, please let us know what we are going to be talking about today. Uh, the episode that I'd like to talk about. That's and enough. I... Well done. Let's go over to Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Before things get really bad, let's move. Uh, no, sorry, Dale. Carry on. Uh, the episode I'd like to talk about is one from the first series. So unfortunately, Wayne wasn't there. Um, I've given him a sneaky heads up, so he's done a bit of research. It is episode five, um, the Haunted Antiques Paranormal Research oh, Centre in Hinkley. Five, episode five. Yes, I didn't do it for that purpose. But thanks. In fact, put that bit out, <laughs> Phil. Just makes me sound out. really good. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing makes you sound really good, Dale. <laughs> Nothing. So I'm going to talk about uh, episode five. Uh, which is the Haunted Antiques Paranormal Research Centre in Hinkley. Oh. Um, so, yes, Ghostcast 5, episode 5. See what I did? Yep. But you didn't know anything about that until Sarah mentioned it a couple of minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> but he's taking full credit for it. Yeah, he is, isn't he? Let's not kid ourselves. Full credit, Sarah. Sarah. Yeah. Uh, no, it is one of my favourite episodes, um, amongst a few, obviously. Um but I, I still find things that happened that night fascinating. So I just wanted to see what other people's thoughts were on it. Now we've had a lot of time to reflect. Um, Phil, let's start with yourself. You go after all the flack I've given you. You gave me the <laughs> honour. Give it's me the honour of going first. It's to get you out of the way. That's all. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> 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 yeah, I um, I really enjoyed it. I must admit, um, it was absolutely bloody roasting. Though, I'm, yeah, that, one, 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 eight, yeah, everybody must remember that it was roasted. Yeah. But yeah. we had some fantastic um, incidents happen, and including your weird incident, which I'm sure you'll talk about in a second, Dale. Mm. Uh, Ben's strange incident, the incident of the door which opened, very weird, mm -hmm. and um, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I must admit. Uh, some of the some of the items have got there are fascinating. If, if people don't know, it's a it's a haunted antiques museum. It's called that for a reason because there's hundreds and hundreds of um, items there that are supposedly haunted, and um, perhaps some of them proved so when um, we did the investigation. And I just remembered about Ben's little little donkey. Oh, donkey! Yeah, donkey. Watching me, watching you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and on that note, Ben. Hello. Tell tell us about your little donkey. Which part? There's so much happened with the donkey that night. <laughs> well, <laughs> go from the very beginning, the very good place to start. I think there was two donkeys, or there was a donkey and something else, but there was two of them, weren't there? Two little plushy yeah. things. Yeah. yeah. And I think, I seem to remember setting up like a tripod, because we were about to film the interview, just below it. And one of them just fell off and jumped, either jumped on me or fell off and just landed <laughs> next to me. <laughs> Yeah. You try and bite your face off. So I, I, was, I was kind of like, <laughs> thought you was a carrot. <laughs> I didn't really think much of it. I was just like, okay, then I just put it back on. <laughs> and was, um... yeah, I didn't think much of it. Just put it back on. Yeah, just put it back on shelf. Just thought that's a bit weird, isn't it? <laughs> well, that wasn't the only thing that happened to you. Absolutely. That night. No, because after the interview, when I was coming back out with the same tripod, 
I was walking back to put the tripod away, and um, as I walked out the door, I looked over to to my right, and I could see uh, what looked like the donkey staring at me. And <laughs> so it had its head like fully turned, looking over to me. And I kept walking across, and I heard like a little shuffle noise. So I turned back and looked at this donkey again, and it was staring at me again. So it had gone from like this to like this to stare at me. <laughs> Very strange. Very that strange. is some freaky shite, man. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it? Oh. Yeah. I remember I wasn't in that room at the time and I just heard Ben just shout, like, what the hell? <laughs> 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 like, what's going on? Yeah. Um, Wayne, obviously you weren't there, sadly, um, but obviously you've watched the episode. Uh, what, what are your t- What is your take on it from an outsider's point of view? I think... I think... The biggest take was the the voice, your scream or the the <laughs> scream. But but what when you watch it from a viewer's point of view, what's so real about it is Ben never even give it a thought. <laughs> so he didn't he didn't try to say like on the words, "Is that you?" Because mm. he just presumed so much it was you, and yeah. it was so clear with you. He just went. Are you, are you all right? And, and you're thinking, yeah, I'm fine. Not even putting two and two together, thinking. Number one, was it you who actually did the scream? And it and it and it was his face. I think I think from the night, from the bits and pieces of what, what Ben's described there, I think um from from my perspective, I mean Ben's my hero from that night. I mean <laughs> let's, let, let's put this in perspective. Fifteen years old and he's stu- he's on the steps with a camera, so professional, on his own, fifteen years old. Ben, <laughs> with- you, are my, you are my new hero. <laughs> It was with Steve. It was yes, with was. Steve, though. Yes, I'll say Ben and friends on the stairs. I'm just going to take a seat next to me, buddy. Let's call him Steve. Steve, the, uh, what's he called? Clown. You know, you know, come on, come on, 15 years old and he's, and he's pulling that off. Absolutely. Credit to you, Ben. Credit to you, mate. So with regards to the screen that you mentioned, Wayne, from, from from you watching it from an outside point of view, would you have said it was me? Yes. Yes, absolutely. So, yeah. Just as ben, Ben's reaction was everything, it, well, it, it was actually calling out to ask you if he was okay. Not if it was you, not yeah. if it was anybody else. He was asking if you were okay. And I think my reaction would have been the same. He's like, what's what's up? What are you, what are you doing? What, what What is the problem? You're thinking, I don't know what you're talking about. It's the reaction, what what just sums it up. On the camera, the camera shot, the the, the reaction of Ben just sums it up for me. Yeah. I'm this, laughing this, at you as well. Yeah. <laughs> this is why this is why I chose episode five for my for my scream, the scream, and the donkey. They were the two main things <laughs> that that happened throughout the night. Okay, there were all the things that happened, but those were the two standout things, I think. And that scream still flummox what are you doing, Phil? This, guys, if you've not seen it, this is the little bit with a donkey, <laughs> followed by Dale's scream. I wasn't just glancing at it, I saw that it was like, I had a feeling when I looked over there, because the same thing jumped off before, so I just had a feeling that something was going to happen. And it was looking directly at me, but I didn't think much of it at the time, and then I kept moving and it moved. It was this one that jumped off before? Yeah, that one. That one? That one moved. Mm. But, but it was the other one this time? Yeah. Okay, oops. Because you found that on the floor, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. it jumped after. Right. We have got night vision. Dale is screaming. I don't know why. Dale, you alright? Dale? Yeah. You alright? Yeah. Alright. <laughs> he screamed. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> oh, <for laughs> oh, Dale's screaming already. Here we go. <sighs> That's becoming quite popular now, actually, Strict Dale Screaming. We need to make a um, weekly instalment of the series. They can make like a montage of it of every time he screams. Um, yeah, so the, the scream still flummoxes me to this day. Um, I, I watch it back and I hear it back. And as you say, Ben just literally turned around and went, oh, there's Dale screaming again. Yeah. Not, yeah. was that you, Dale, or who Absolutely. was that? There was, there was no... No, no doubt about no it. No question. No question. No question. No question. No. No. But, no. but now, after, but obviously after reviewing the footage, and you see it wasn't me. When you look at the two videos side by side, my change. camera and <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
um, the, the, when, it, when it's timestamped, you can say, I'm not doing anything. I'm just talking away to myself. So, yeah, it's fascinating. Did you think it was you, Dale? <laughs> well, no. Well, yes. No, yes, I did. Yeah. yeah. When it's crazy, I isn't it? Back, the voice, yeah. When we reviewed the footage um, for the summary, yeah, I'd, if, if I'd have had blindfold on and heard that, I, I'd have said, yeah, it was me. Crazy. And that's what is so mad about it. That's what's so surreal, definitely. Uh, go on then, Jane. What's wh How do you feel about it now you've obviously had some time to reflect? Do you know what? I think I'm one of the people who the night happened drowned me. It's one of the few places where not a lot went on for me. Beginning of the night, I heard a cat. Um, yes, Then course. I found that had been reported previously, which I didn't know about. We actually um, got a cat as well, um, a cat meow. Not at that time, but if you remember, there is a meow. There was an audience. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yes. yeah, 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 actually, no, you said that. But there other was. than that, it's just watching what everybody else was, was you know, having happened to them. It was a quiet one for me, which makes a change, I suppose. Um, but, yeah, fascinating place. Gosh, it was so warm that night. It was. So, so but warm. we couldn't open windows because it was nightlife outside. I know, I know. There was quite a lot of external noise at the start yeah. of the night, Um but, yeah, very, very interesting place. OK. Uh, Sarah, go on then. What do you think? I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I, um, I think the big thing for me was the door. Yeah. That the was towards opening. the end of the night, wasn't it? Yeah, because we'd got... This is back when, obviously, we'd got Tim on the team and he was in the, the, the top of the stairs where Ben had been sat earlier on. Yeah. And myself and Jane, we we were in the um, the other room, and I was sat in that rocking chair that's there yeah. with my back to the door, and oh, gosh, the door yeah. the door just opened by itself. And obviously, Tim's literally on the other side. It makes him jump, and you can yeah. see that on the footage. He's like, "Who's that?" He thinks somebody's. I think it's him coming in, and Gordon he thinks he's just going out. I, that's I right. forgot yeah, about Gordon that. Crikey! How did I forget that? Gorgeous. Oh my goodness. Bennett, who's that? You have you just opened that door? No, it's gone on its own, giving me bloody heart attack, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know, Jane. How could you forget that? Because you're old. Yeah. That was yeah. fascinating because the door was closed on a latch, wasn't it? Yeah. So, yeah. but apparently, um, according to Neil, who owns um, Haunted Antiques, that does occur quite often. So, and the thing I will say now is that. I know that they've actually got the downstairs of the building as well. When we were yeah. there, they only had the upstairs areas and those stairs went down to a door that was literally just locked so you couldn't go further. But now they've got downstairs room, so it would be quite interesting to go back, whether it's with Are You Haunted or just on a personal basis. Mm. I would like to go back and uh, and see what's new. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if, um, if anybody does get the chance to go and visit the uh, Haunted Antiques Paranormal Research Centre in Hinckley in Leicestershire I highly recommend you pay a visit yes and I believe I've seen today on social media that they've just opened they've just opened in the doors now for bookings so get in there before Brilliant. everybody else book mm. and that's great news that we found out isn't it that things are finally yeah. opening back up Fingers crossed. Yes. Fingers crossed. Yeah. If you keep seeing me go like this it's because there's a fly flying round yeah. <laughs> eventually she'll go she'll go <laughs> 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 I was expecting chopsticks, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that was um, Series 1. So that was Series 1, Episode 5, uh, the Haunted Antiques Paranormal Research Centre. Thank you. OK, thank you very much, Dale. That's a very, you, very Dale. fascinating indeed. <laughs> thank you. And now, Sarah has some very important information about... Would you rather? <laughs> well, I'm just going to set my timer going, so... <clears throat> I hope you've all got some good ideas for would you rather. Don't shake your eyes. No. <laughs> Is that a no? <laughs> I'm saying no. Right, I'm randomly... I'm not looking at how long I'm giving it. I've just started it now. OK. <laughs> That's been set. So now it's obviously time for... The News! Okay, and as we know, it's Dale's choice of topic to talk about on the news. What is it, pray tell? Thank you. 
Thank you, Phil. Um, this is an article that's been that's come to light quite predominantly um, quite recently due to um, a series called Surviving Death on Netflix. Um, other subscription TV channels are available. Um, and it was a, a gentleman called John. Let me just get my notes. Bear with me. Here we go. Oh, professional. Ooh. Oh, oh, oh. Can you it's only suspended it like two weeks ago. Death. It's only got suspended yeah. it two weeks ago, so I'm just trying to yeah, yeah. be up to tap, his level. Tap him on your desk, um, tap him on your desk, like the news. That's what I just said. I know, but he wasn't listening to you. Well, what, sorry? Tap him oh. on your desk. Okay. Very good. Okay. Oh, crap. You can put sound effects in whatever <laughs> you want. <laughs> <laughs> So this is a news article that's come to prominence quite recently due to um, a show on Netflix called Surviving Death. Um, it happened in the late 80s in Los Angeles, and it was a gentleman called John Huckett um, and multiple witnesses that um, experienced this. What it was, he received a Polaroid camera for Christmas. Um, Christmas 1991. Um why it says late 80s, I don't know, because I don't know why I've said that, because it was Christmas 1991. Do you want so, to start again? Yeah. This is absolutely shocking. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> right, go with your shuffling. No, okay, just go straight into it. So this is an article that's come to prominence quite recently due to a paranormal... No, sorry, a show. Not paranormal show. A show on Netflix called Surviving Death. Um, it happened in Los Angeles <laughs> in the early 90s. Stop. <laughs> Laughing at me. You know. Give me strength. Yeah, that's any proof needed that Jane was pissed. There you go. I'm afraid I was very, very drunk. <clears throat> so this news article came has come to prominence quite recently due to <laughs> I'm pissed. <laughs> oh my god! All right, shall, shall I try again? Yeah, prominent right now, Prominence. Prominence. I know. Yeah. Do you? Okay, so this nude, new. <laughs> no, no, no. This nude. <laughs> this nude story. <laughs> you have sent me them pictures. <laughs> 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 okay, so this news article has come to prominence quite recently due to uh, a show on Netflix called Surviving Death. Um, it's from the early 90s. And Surviving yeah, this fucking ghost cast to be a first. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> it's from the early 90s, um, Christmas 90. Ninety-one to be precise. <laughs> 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 <Lots> of shambles. <laughs> oh my word! Uh, what did you drop, Dale? Uh, Wayne. It worked. It worked. <laughs> Dropped a bollock. <laughs> <laughs> so I talk of that nude nudity. <laughs> God. <laughs> right. <laughs> professional, guys. Professional. <laughs> She's got to be done for half time. <laughs> Give Wayne a couple of minutes. Wayne, do you need me to slap you? <laughs> On the cue. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just going to put my notebook out of you. Sorry, two seconds. There we go. I can't see you now. <clears throat> so it happened in Los Angeles in um, 1991, Christmas off. Um, and it was a gentleman called John Huckett um, was the photographer. Um, and there were multiple witnesses to this. Um, he received a Polaroid camera from his dad for Christmas. 
and he started taking photos and on the photos was um, a, a mist, uh, a white mist, let's say. And he found it very odd and he thought it was his dad playing tricks with him because his dad got him this Polaroid and it carried on. And eventually um, the photos became more defined, whereas um, they started asking out and um, they thought it was some sort of ghost, some sort of spirit. And they asked out, um, are you here now? And the photo they took clearly showed the word yes. And this carried on. They took numerous photos over a long period of time, as far as I'm aware. Um, and, and they took various photos, asked various questions. And so many answers came out. Another one, they asked, what was your name? And it came with the word right. And they took... 11 to 12,000 photos over this period of time. And eventually it had to stop because they didn't make the Polaroid film uh, or, the, or supported that camera that he had anymore. So he couldn't get any more film. And it didn't happen with any other type of Polaroid. It was only this one type. Um, I personally find it very interesting. Um, what are your guys' thoughts? Um, I'm not going to start with Phil because I know where he's going with it. Um, Sarah. <clears throat> right, okay. So I've, w I've watched the video. <clears throat> I've, I've looked at the photographs. I find that it's just too good to be true. The first image, the fluffy little ghost, with it's got the actual ghost. It's like one of these behind. It's proper. <laughs> it, it is. It's you a can see eyes and a like ghost. Kind of cartoon thing. ghost. Yeah. Now, to me... Mm, bit dodgy bit bit kind of weird now i understand that because of the chemical makeup of the the polaroid camera at that point and now you've just said it yourself that they can't do it anymore they don't produce this film anymore you can act before the film the photographs actually been developed you can write on it and it will come through in the image i think that that's what's happened i don't think it's real okay um yeah okay wayne uh yeah i think when i originally seen the first few where it were all like just some missed light source i'm just i was thinking more like is the camera faulty because he ain't showing any photographs of anything else what he's taken with his, his camera he got for christmas other than these said photographs and then like sarah says then you're thinking okay it could just be a fault it could be something what what bounce on a light source and then then words come on it and then that, when you look carefully at the actual, some of the words, they're actually creating their own light source. They're actually causing a reflection on something in his room or something like that. So like, like Sarah says, it's... I think it's the pressure as they've written. I think yeah, it's the pressure. It, it, it's on, actually on showing the... like light. So I think I, I, I totally agree. First thinking, yeah, it could be something in the room or, or a fault, even a faulty camera because we've don't seen no other photographs of what this camera's taken. But I think then when it comes on to the actual words, it, it lost me at that point. Mm. Okay, Ben. Well, yeah, I think the camera itself must be faulty because we didn't actually see any pictures where it was clear without any, yeah, anything on it. And you can kind of somewhat believe it if it's just like when it says that yes, just one word. But it gets to the point where it's like writing out a full sentence, and it's just it just becomes less and less believable. Yeah, when it ordered a pizza, <laughs> I just that was too much for me. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that was a joke. That was a joke. <laughs> uh, Jane. Well, when I first looked at it, I thought um, it'd be, I'd be interested to see photographs from anywhere else but that house because they were all taken in the same place. Mm. Fault, if we're calling it a fault, had it been on the photographs somewhere else. Then yes, it would have been a fault. If the other photographs had been clear. That would have been more interesting. Yeah. But then when it got to the writing, it was so clear and so precise. Uh, I didn't think about what Sarah had said about them pressing on the photograph as it was developing. But, yeah, I, I, it's one of those, isn't it? If you're there and it really was happening, it was happening. But I can't, I can't see it. I, can't, I really can't see it. If, if that had happened then, that would be world famous now if that was real, in my, in my opinion. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, the way I look at it, I, I agree to an extent with um, what you say. I am going to come to you, Phil, don't worry. Um, I, I do agree with what you say. Now, the way I look at it, though, is 
it doesn't seem defined enough. Now, as you say, Sarah, you can write on the film as it's been developed and it'll come out. The way I look at it, the writing doesn't seem that defined. It is, it's too abstract, too diffused, some of the letters. Uh, that's why I don't think it's, it's that, that someone's pressed on it. Now, I don't know how it could have been done. Yes, it could have been tampered with because we all, I think we all know how Polaroids work. They, they come out and you, you wave them in air to dry them out um, to get them to develop. So, so why yeah, couldn't something... it have done it when this film, this particular <laughs> film stopped being produced? If that was a spirit and it was, it was somehow influencing how the image came out, what would be the difference between that and a new chemical balance of the new films? Well, that's no, that's exactly what my point is, is does that spirit have just a connection to a certain chemical balance? I don't know. Um, uh, almost like like a sentient connection kind of thing. Not that, not a sentient connection, not the same principle in, in that form, but only to certain chemical balances in, or imbalances. Whereas the new Polaroid that came out after that one finished was different, so the spirit couldn't manifest itself. You mean in as in the, 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 it's got to be exactly right? Yeah, yeah. I know a certain it's chemical balance, that spirit could manifest itself and, and communicate like that. Yeah, and but it just happened to be in that house with that guy with that <laughs> camera at that time? Nah. Mm, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Go on then, Phil. Do your worst. <laughs> right, there are various different Instamatic Polaroid film. One yeah. of those Polaroid films is easy to manipulate by pressure. And there are actually artists who do this and have created pieces of artwork by manipulating Polaroid camera film as it's come out. Mm -hmm. Um, and you can create all kinds of weird effects with it. And I think that's a simply, that's exactly what he's done. I think it, the, the camera film's gone in, he's taken the photo, as it's come out, in those few first few minutes that it's come out, you can manipulate by putting various amounts of pressure on the different areas of the, of the film. Um, and I think that's what he's done. Now, I don't know about all this, um, about the film was no longer available, because there are several different films that you can do it with, right. to varying degrees. So, and did you say 12,000 photos? He, according to the article, he took between 11 and 12,000 photos over right, a period of time. Yeah. Because, yeah, I've, I've seen this thing, I've seen the, the article before a long time ago. Mm -hmm. um, and I just don't see how, if he's taken 12,000, 11 to 12,000 photographs, um, and they've all got these weird <clears throat> things on, why it wasn't thoroughly investigated and why it wasn't first-hand news around yeah. the world, like Wayne said. Yeah, oh. yeah. yeah. Just as I'm giving my serious kind of... Uh, <laughs> it is, Ed. Yeah. So anyway, that's my point of view, and I don't think it's, um, it was... think it's real. Okay, the timer has counted down and the alarm has gone off. So I'm going to get my little spinny wheel on here, on my phone, if I can find it, and uh, we'll spin it. We shall spin the spinny spin thing. I found it. Spin the spinny spin thing. Yeah. Nice. Hey, that's probably the clearest thing we've ever had of it, isn't it? No. Can no, almost can't see it. it. Can't see it. <laughs> Anyway, it's there. Look. Oh, there it is. There Sorry it is. for a Anyway, let's uh, spin it. Oh. It's Wayne. <gasps> oh. Oh. oh, my word. Oh, my word. <clears throat> Take it away, Wayney. Okay. Would you rather be a member of the Ghostbusters... Or would you rather be a member of the X Files and why? Oh, oh my Sarah. God! Why do you come to me first? I need <laughs> time to protest. I see your face. I see your face. I need time to protest. Ghostbusters. Why? Because of that library. I want to go in that library. <laughs> Shh. Not really. She likes the bit where he goes. 
That's it. Phil. What? Phil. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I would be Fox Mulder, but obviously sexier and more handsome, um, because they investigate serious things. And I think Dale. some of the cases that I was talking, <laughs> you went quiet. And I think some of the cases that they investigated were really, really interesting, and it's right up my alleyway. Thought it might be, Dale. Um, yeah, I think it's going to have to be X Files for me. Um, I always used to love watching X Files. Um, yeah, it will be Scully though in the nineties. <laughs> um, she's great. If, if I've got legs like that, yes. Uh, <laughs> We've seen the photos, Dale. We've seen the photos. <laughs> Slightly hairier, but similar. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I think I would rather be in the X Files purely. I already bust ghosts. No, no, I already go ghosts uh, on paranormal investigation. So I think the X Files is the other way to go. It's it's the obvious choice. Um, I do have um, I won't go as far as a fascination, but uh, an interest in ufology. Um, so I think yeah, the X Files is the way forward. Jane. Well. I absolutely love anything to do with UFOs. But come on, me and Sarah are Ghostbusters. What are you on about? <laughs> come, come on, girl. On. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go- Ghostbusters in that, that lousy remake. No, it's true, though. The film was lousy, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah. It wasn't that bad. No, it really yeah, it was. It really was. It was diabolical. <laughs> anything, ben? anything, it'll do for me. Uh, I've never oh, seen X Files. You've never seen it? No. Oh, oh. You've never seen X Files? No. Oh, wow. So wow. by default, I have to go with Ghostbuster. Default. But I do get a Ghostbuster trap, which is pretty cool. It's a vacuum yeah. cleaner thing where you walk around with it. No, no. <laughs> yeah, you've got a vacuum cleaner here, um, Ben, but you never walk around with that bloody thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's going quiet. Oh, oh, ben, Ben, I think you, I think you need to, you need to invest some time in. Um, X-Files, definitely. Worth watching. Uh, Can I just say that I'm quite surprised by Phil's answer? Why? Because he watches all these UFO shows, right? And here he is wanting to be in the X-Files investigating UFOs. But when it gets to sort of like, I don't know, half 10, quarter to 11, and it's time, you know, that we're thinking about letting dogs out, I get this text. Will you come and let dogs out with me? (laughs) (laughs) It's true. Because I've because been watching... he's watching <laughs> alien stuff and he don't go outside on his own. I've been watching, I've been watching Ben Hansen's um, UFO Witness. Uh, and he's the guy that used to do fact, fact and faked. Fact or faked. Yeah. And, uh, right. The last last few nights I've been texting Sarah about half past 11. Can you come and let the dogs out with me? I have this weird fear of... Uh, not weird fear, but it is a real fear for me of um, getting abducted by aliens. I don't know why. And you want to be in the X-Files? Yeah. So- Bill, they wouldn't want to keep you, don't worry. Ah, well, yeah. <laughs> but there's, there's, you know, that's the benefit of knowing you, though, Dale, isn't it? Because now we know what the alien human hybrid looks like. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. We can also organise the probing if you want to know what that feels like. <laughs> What did you just say? <laughs> you'll, 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 you'll have to organise a probing. <laughs> what what the hell? Let's go out. Jane, you need to go out. You need to get out more. Find some somebody to give you a probing. Oh. Wayne, answer your own question. Wayne, yes. X Files. Why? So. Why? Because there's so many... I mean, we're not investigating just one thing. We're investigating anything what's strange and abnormal, like mm. Dale, Dale or, you know, <laughs> things like things We like both that. said that together. <laughs> 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 you know, so you, you can imagine what, what we could investigate. There's no, there's no limits to it. So, yeah, X-Files. Uh, and that was Would You Rather? And I think... We need to go back now to the news article, Dale. Yes. Um, so, thumbs up, thumbs down, or are you a bit on the fence? Oh, Jane. Oh, 
Uh-uh. Um, okay. I'm, is it worth asking you, Phil? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Sarah? Down. This is not going well for me, is it? Um, <laughs> ben? Ben's disappearing thumb. <laughs> Come on, Wayne. Can I rely on you? No oh, balls. <laughs> um, what do okay. you reckon, Dale? <laughs> I, 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 I was yeah, going Dale. like that, to be honest. Well, <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel like I've been... <laughs> Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday. <laughs> Quickly moving on. <laughs> yeah, swiftly, swiftly moving on. <clears throat> and that <laughs> was the news. You didn't do your topic of the day, topic of the day, topic we of the day. We haven't done it yet. Yeah. Uh, Jane. We've not done I it yet. done that earlier. No. No. How many of these have you actually participated in? Oh, what? You know, mentally like, wise. Do you know what? Like, that freaking little fly came and landed on my keyboard when you were talking, and I was dying to swat it. And I thought, <laughs> Don't ah. you dare kill it, lady. Oh, shut up. It's a freaking fly. <laughs> you, know, you can almost get your head in that glass. It's a living thing. You don't kill it. It's a I... living thing. Do, 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 do. I won't kill the fly. What a terrible thing to lose. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, fascinating, Dale. Thank you very much for the news article uh, that we've just been speaking about. And now, it's Topic of the Day. Okay, Dale. I'll let you have that topic of the day wiggle because it's your birthday. <laughs> Thanks. But for hey, future you might reference... want to double your sound onto it, though. If you double your sound yeah. onto it. Yeah? <laughs> for future reference, it goes like this. Topic of the day, topic of the day, topic of the day, <laughs> take it away. Yeah. Uh, what is the topic of the day, Dale? Um, it's, <clears throat> it's to go effectively with the news article and with my area of expertise. It is... <laughs> Did somebody fart then? Did somebody? No. Did anybody else hear that? No, I, heard I, heard it. It. I thought it was a table. I it, yeah, it, I... went, it went. <laughs> <laughs> was it you, Ben? Was it you? It wasn't me. Were me? Oh, okay. It was something there. Oh, did you do it again? Then? Is it your chair? Not mine. No. Chair. <laughs> no. Oh, there we go. Who's doing that? That was me starting. (laughs) 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 Oh, Ben's face is disgusted. (laughs) It's like, just get on with it. (laughs) (laughs) So, Dale. What is the topic you're going to be talking about? Okay, so it's um, loosely connected to the news article and to my area of expertise, photography. Are photos, or is photography, a worthwhile medium in paranormal investigation? Can photos be used, or can they be credited or discredited in paranormal investigations? Um, Jane. Oh, well, yes, I suppose they can be um, in a controlled environment. Um. Doing well, Jane. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is that it? Convincing everybody that you was that your head. I think that yeah, it's a controlled environment. <laughs> it's not an easy answer, is it though, really? Not when you're drunk. <laughs> not, not your cheeky guess. <laughs> <laughs> so there you have it, Jane's expert advice. There you go. 
Okay, <laughs> uh, moving swiftly on, Phil. Uh, well, now you know what my views are about taking photographs <clears throat> and perhaps you, you know filming videos, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, as far as paranormal goes, um, I'm not overly convinced that you can actually take a photograph of a spirit entity if such things exist, uh, because I believe that you would need a sentient living conscience consciousness to connect with whatever's there. Um, and obviously, because a camera is a dead item, it's not a living, it's not no sentient uh, intelligence or whatever, um, I don't think you'd be able to take a photo of it. Okay. What about what about video, though, Phil? Because we thought that before, and then we got the thing from Keithley Street. Hence me sitting and pondering what we were saying, because we all agreed with you at that point when we were talking about the sentient connection, but then we're getting things that are, that are arguing with that point. Mm. Uh, yeah, the only thing I can think of is perhaps they're, they're, if if spirits do exist, that they can kind of manifest themselves in a different way. If you know what I mean, if that makes sense, they might they might have several forms in which they can just you know they show themselves, um, and it might be that in that particular instance, the the manifestation took place in a in a particular way that would be we were able to capture it. Do we, do we think that it's been more since digital photography came around rather than physical film photography that we've caught more? Is that because people take more, more pictures or is it that digital photography can pick more things up? Um, I think it's the onset of digital, the digital age and the cameras becoming so popular with people that we're capturing more um, supposedly strange paranormal um, ghosts and spirits, if you like. Um, I've never seen a, a proper 35 millimeter film photo, which has convinced me that they've captured a ghost on it. And the photo of the um, brown lady, brown lady brown on the stairs. Yeah. Now, are, are, what are they? Again, is that paradolia or is that something that's been caught in a photo? This is my point. It, is this just out to anybody or? Yeah, you well, somebody? anybody, but yeah. Um, I believe the. The Brown Lady of Raynham is nothing more than um, weird reflect, not reflections, but the way that the flash that was used at the time on the old cameras and the old phot photograph techniques has um, refracted or rebounded off the, the wooden panelling on the side of the pattern on the side of the, um, uh, the the staircase. Refraction rather than reflection. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Sarah. This. For me, in my opinion, I don't think there's any definitive answer to this question. Um, I would say, like we do, we use photography within our investigations. We don't say we're not going to use it because we don't feel that it would work. It's an open question, is it? It's, it's, it, we're we're going to try it because perhaps we might get something, like we might get something on the video. It's a way of experimenting. I think back, just regarding what Phil's just said, back to that point uh, when I took that photograph at Ari of Holmesen, and I saw as clear as day, I saw a man in front of me and he, it was when I was pointing the camera and it wasn't a phone camera, it was one of the digital little cameras mm -hmm. and the flash lit the room up and it was only that the flash lit the room up that I saw the man, but he wasn't in my photograph. Why is that? Why is he not in my photograph? Because I saw him, he was there. But I don't know. Uh, I'm still the jury's out for me. I would say, let's continue to use it and see if uh, you know we do get anything. Yeah, you can't not use it because yeah. you know I might be completely wrong, or that kind yeah. of theory and along those lines might be completely wrong. What about Phil? Sorry to interrupt you. The the going back to photographs, the famous ones. What about the Cumbermere Abbey? Um, that was the monk. No, 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 the guy who... It was Lord Combermere, wasn't it, sat in his yeah, chair in the library? Yeah, he was sat in his chair. Oh, 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 yeah, I've seen that one as well, yeah, yeah. Wasn't that at the time when, was it the funerals taking place? Yeah. Or it was like certain, that, yeah. certainly after he died that he... It was a significant he, moment, wasn't it? He was yeah. in the chair. We investigated that place, by the way. <laughs> Brilliant place. Mm. So what um, do you think about that then, Phil? That, that photo? I don't... I'm not 100% certain. This is what I mean. It... It kind of, most of me thinks that along the theory that I mentioned a minute ago, where 
uh, we're not I'm not sure whether we can capture such an image. Um, but then again, you've got photos like that or you know, photos that look to all intents and purposes that whatever's there is, is perhaps a spirit of the person that's, you know, is deceased. Um, but again, and I'm not saying this is what's happened at all. Um, it, it could have been double exposure. It could have been somebody messing about. It's him, um, though. That's the thing. Yeah, it, it, it is him. Mm. But who's to say that he was not photographed there previously in the chair? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because if it's his library, then I very much doubt that he's going to be moving chairs around all over the place. And it's more likely that it's going to be in the same place all the while he was using the library. Mm. It's the same as, as we always come back to. If you took the photo at that time and you got it, you know it's real. Yeah. But no one else is going to believe you. No, mm. well, that's it. Yeah. yeah. OK. Wayne? Yeah, I think Phil just nailed what I was going to say is because the digital age, everybody now has got a phone which has got a camera on. I mean, in the olden days, like, you, you know, people used to carry cameras to go on holidays and stuff. They weren't really carrying them in the pockets. Olden days, Wayne. Olden, olden day, but, days. But in, in, <laughs> Phil's, in Phil's day, you know, obviously, it was uh, probably we wouldn't have had the uh, cameras. But... I totally agree with that. Me. Calls, totally... That calls, Wayne, that calls, <laughs> that calls for what my mum would, that's my mum look. <laughs> <laughs> I've, had the, I've had the look, I've had the look. I do apologise for what's at that back. <laughs> <laughs> In Jane's day. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, she'd, have, no. she'd have to make a camera out of a ch chisel it out of a chunk of stone first. Back you'd have in to stand in front of it for two and a half hours for it to actually take the photograph. <laughs> That's called a painting. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I think I think yeah, I think the camera now investigations is. We have all got our opinions on it, but we must continue to use it in investigations because we don't know where it's going to go. So I whether we see, can catch it. I can just see somebody doing a portrait now and then a ghost behind them and saying, well, it, it wasn't there when I did it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, no, it's, okay, it's okay. I just think I just think I agree with Phil. It, it is we must continue to use it just in case something is there and we capture something. That's the whole idea of investigating. Every time we go out there, we carry the equipment we carry in the oh, we're going to capture something on there. Sometimes we won't. But I think it, what's also important is to use it as a reference point. So say the photograph or the camera, what they got at, at Keith Street, we can go back now and try to recreate that because we photographed it or got it on camera. Without that, we would have never known it would have happened. So, yes, I do think uh, digital uh, photography or, or, or video is important on investigation. Definitely. For that reason. Jane's door's just opened. Jane's door's just opened. <laughs> wow. Uh, it's, she lives it's, alone. It's a, it's a spooky dolphin. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> and that, <laughs> when Rain's finished talking, is topic of the day. Well, there you go. Are you haunted? Ghost cast number five. Some very interesting news topics to talk about from Dale and the topic of the day, which I'm sure you'll find intriguing. So thank you very much, Dale, on your birthday. Thanks for taking time out to come and spend it with us. My absolute thank pleasure. Thank you. And uh, happy birthday. How old are you, by the way? At 38. 38. 30. 38. 38. There you go. Yes. Um, I'm still nowhere near Jane. Don't worry. <laughs> Oi! Nobody's near Jane. Um, <laughs> physically and age-wise. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, on the next Ghost Cast, which will be <laughs> Ghost Cast number six, which will be out in a fortnight's time after this one, uh, it will be my turn to bring the news oh, article oh, and oh, well. the topic of the day. So I uh, better get my thinking hat on and do some research. But until then, till we see you on the Ghostcast episode six, from myself, Phil, thank you for watching <laughs> us. From Sarah. Bye now. From Wayne. From, well, very, very posh. Uh, from Ben. Ciao. Oh, uh, Jane. Silly. Until next time. Th oh, Dale. Just <laughs> <laughs> half an hour. Until next time, we'll see you in two weeks' time. 
Take care of yourselves. Stay safe. And hey, let's be careful out there. Sayonara. Bye.